does. She just wanna cut up in the car, told her start it up. I don't wanna see it from your eyes unless it's party, yeah. Ran into my old chick, she said you ain't playing fair, playing fair, playing fair. No, I ain't playing fair, playing fair, playing fair. No, I ain't playing fair. Ask her why she's staying there, she said she don't know. I had to ask her all, but I really had to go and get my pop on. Yeah, I get my pop on. If she needs some good, good, tell her she got hot on. She know I'm the top dog, I know she got hot on, but let's see. There's always some lag, some lag going on, and um, I feel like I'm getting some feedback from my from my headphones too. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, happy Thursday. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, glad to be back. I couldn't get situated for Wednesday. I had some other stuff. I had some friends in town, so. I had to push the live stream to Thursday, and then, um, this one should be a good one. I'm going to keep it kind of quick and short. Uh, so we're talking about jiu-jitsu being a marathon and not a sprint. And, um, you know, this is something I say all the time, you know, my friends, other black belts say all the time um, to new students because often they need to hear it more than anyone else someone starting out you know they need the most motivation they need the most help um yeah so we're gonna i got a little presentation i'll get to and then maybe i'll try to get somebody on the zoom we'll see how that works today uh but otherwise i'm gonna try to be in and out today okay we'll wait for a little bit a few more people to jump in on the on the chat while we wait, I'm gonna play some music. Let me know if the music's too loud and if you can hear it and stuff. stand up <laughs> it's good for you uh, I typically just keep my stand up to um, right before tournaments just so I don't get injured and I decrease my chances of getting injured you know doing a crazy scramble or something so um, you know just be careful listen to your body be careful of those crazy guys out there you know they're super wild and reckless you gotta be careful doing takedowns with those guys I'll go ahead and put the Zoom link in the chat room too. If anybody wants to get their Zoom ready, I'll maybe set up a talk or two. Uh, it's been kind of chill. You know, everybody's in the winter, Christmas, holiday spirit, so it's been pretty chill on the Zoom. So I'm not going to force that one right now. Uh, but if you guys are interested, I'll link it at the, in the chat room. So a uh, little presentation for you guys. Um, you know how I do it, like to keep it kind of organized for myself so I don't just ramble. I think last time, last week's live stream, I was just rambling on. <laughs> I was a little tired too, but I was just rambling on. So it keeps me a little bit more focused. Where I think my head goes over here. Here we go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we, 
jiu-jitsu not is a marathon it's not a sprint and um i was inspired by a, a reddit post i'm on reddit you know i lurk on reddit a little bit so there's always some interesting points of views on there interesting topics being covered so um and this ties in with our topic and so dealing with the lack of progress in bjj so um i think you know most frustration from students is coming from them not feeling like they're pro progressing. Um, and you, you kind of real like, um, I see white belts, they come in and initially there's that, like, they got to get over that hump where they don't know anything. They're struggling to remember the techniques. They're just kind of terrible for, you know, a good six months. Uh, but afterwards, you know, once they see, start seeing progress, they're able to start doing a warm up. They're able to hang in the warm up. They're able to start doing remember, remembering some of the drills, the techniques. They're able to start rolling and kind of holding their own a little bit better. That's when people are super motivated. You know, they want to train hard. They're addicted to jujitsu. Um, but that process, that feeling, that stage doesn't always last. It's not permanent. I got a little one punch man for you guys, and uh. I don't know if you guys watched that anime, but, you know, in One Punch Man, he wanted to become a hero. Uh, so he decided decided to start training himself, training his body, you know, physical training. And what you see is that he goes through, you know, he doesn't start off being One Punch Man. He starts off being a regular person and he's struggling to do, you know, 100 push-ups. He's struggling to do like a, I think, five kilometer run. He's struggling to do 100 squats. And um, that's, that's the same thing that we all go through we all go through a period of being bad um in jiu-jitsu at least you're gonna be bad you know even if you're super athletic you're probably not gonna have a good guard or you know it's just the technique is so different that usually you're gonna have there's gonna be some pain point there's gonna be some weak spot that you're not gonna be good at and I, you know i think a lot of people are, aren't good at rolling you know especially they're just getting demolished when you're a white belt so yeah dealing with that lack of progress we got a few people in here you know me i like to just kind of get into it and then like people are like hey what did i miss i'm like hey man just catch a live stream later timothy says that totally explains why my son's been making himself do 100 push-ups squats pull-ups yeah exactly watch out <laughs> he's gonna get you soon And so BJJ in general is full of, full of ups and downs. Um, this is a part of life, definitely a part of jiu-jitsu. There's going to be times where you feel amazing. You're rolling really well. You know, you're catching higher belts. You're catching your rivals. And then the next day, you're, you're the one getting caught. You're the one getting beat up. You're the one messing up the technique, forgetting the moves. Um, you know, another analogy we use in jiu-jitsu is... is that sometimes you're the hammer and sometimes you're the nail. So when you're the hammer, that's when you're you're in that up period. You're in that elevated state where you're doing awesome. You feel great. You love training. It's awesome. You come in, you're like, I'm ready to do this. And then that's when you're the hammer and you're just boom, boom, knocking everybody out. But then on the flip side, sometimes you're the nail. You're you're getting hammered in. <laughs> you, yeah, that hammer's getting you. And... uh you guys just got to realize it's always going to be like that. You know, even when you're a black belt, you're going to have some good days where you're like, man, I was good today. And then, then there's going to be days where you're, where you're a little off and, you, you know, maybe you, you didn't pass that lower belt guard or maybe you didn't tap out that lower belt. Or, you know, sometimes you get caught. Um, and that's natural, too. What I see high-level guys do is they don't really... Uh, you know, they don't really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We don't really stick on those, you know, when you get caught or you're having like a down day, like we don't really get stuck on that, on that, that feeling or that thought process because we know that the next day might be different. Next week might be different. Next year might be different. So I think the quicker you're able to recognize those down periods, the quicker you're going to be able to get out of, out of those down periods. Um, you know, down periods, also plateaus where you're kind of 
just maintaining the same skill, not progressing. Um, yeah, it's just natural, man. It's natural. Your skill progression is, you know, it's not going to be like exponential. Boom. It's not always going to be linear. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit more shaky, right? And uh, yeah, progress is never completely linear in any type of skill acquisition. Yeah. Whatever skill you're developing, there's going to be times where your skills going to be developing quicker and then times where your skills not going to be developing as fast or sometimes you might be going backwards. Um, I think your mindset a lot of times is what will get you through those periods. Yeah, if you have a good mindset, positive mindset, you know, hey, I just got to get over this hurdle. You know, usually those people make it. Uh, but when people get stuck, and they're like, man, I'm not doing well. What's wrong? Why are there, why aren't I doing better? I should be doing better. It just kind of it's like a snowball effect. Let's see, we got a few people in here. It's pretty. Everybody's on holiday, man. Everybody's on. Everybody's on this right here. <laughs> everybody's on the holiday schedule. Yeah, we're talking about the ups and downs. Uh, everybody I know, myself included, has gone through ups and downs. You know, I've seen the best guys in the world have an off day where they got caught, and you're like, man, that guy got caught. Yeah, he's he's human. Recognize that everybody's human. I think a lot of people want to put, pe uh, you know, especially in jujitsu, because you're able to train with. People that you see online, people that you see on Flow Grappling, pe people that you see winning these tournaments. Uh, you know, I, I think a lot of times these guys, these girls get pedal pedestalized in an unhealthy way. Uh, but just realize everybody's human, you know. We all get injured. We all make mistakes. We all go through those ups and downs. Uh, another uh, reason people feel like they're not progressing, students feel like they're not progressing, is because they're, uh, you know, they're always gauging their own performance based off other people, you know, um, you know, other people's standards, other people's progress, other people's performance, and this happened to me maybe a few years ago. I was teaching a class. Okay, I'm a black belt instructor. I'm teaching a class, and then man, this brown belt guy like almost has a nervous breakdown when he he i guess we were doing some drills he couldn't pass my guard or something something like that it was like something strange and i guess he was putting pressure on himself to beat me in training uh, he's trying to beat me in training and um i could just see the guy who's about to have a nervous breakdown and um i i haven't really i think that was the first time i experienced that with the higher belt it was uh you know, he was, I guess he was just trying to compare himself, you know, with me, the coach, the black belt coach, uh, who's getting ready for a tournament. You know, if he, I, hey, when I'm getting ready for a tournament, man, I'm going hard. I don't care if you're white belt, blue belt, girl, kid, old person. Ah, I'm hammering you in. <laughs> uh, but yeah, instead of like take learning from the experience, which is what I do when I'm going against better people, I try to learn from the, that experience so I can do better the next time. Um, but yeah, if you're just, t if you're having a, that such a negative experience from training, something, something's not going right. And so, you know, a lot of times people will start to feel like they're, you know, standing still that plateau or they're going backwards. Uh, a great example, Vegeta from DBZ, uh, you know, his, biggest enemy half the t most of the, t the the series it was himself you know um yeah he was his biggest enemy and I, you know a lot of people i see a lot of people in the same kind of uh situation where they're putting so much pressure on themselves to comparing themselves to other people you know versus focusing on what they're good at and improving on upon that yeah i think you know, that's a great example of, you know, what I see, people being too hard on themselves, 
being like uh, comparing themselves to other people when you know jujitsu is a personal practice you know of course we train together we can you know we're all in all in it together but you got to take some time to figure out what like uh your style figure out how to maximize your body type your personality how your personality is going to fit into your techniques and your skill development what skills do you want to work on what skills do you need to work on <laughs> timothy's like kakarot yeah yeah, Vegeta always compared himself to Kakarot, to Goku. And um, you didn't see until later in the series when he started training with Goku and, you know, not focusing as much on that rivalry, that's when he started getting better and started improving. Um, and then uh, your game hasn't regressed. Um, yeah, sometimes it do. If, you take, if you're taking time off, okay, your game's going down. Uh, but if you're training consistently, typically you're 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 not regressing. Um, a lot of times it's just your knowledge. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read exactly what I got on here so I don't mess it up. Your game hasn't regressed. Your knowledge has just progressed to the point where you recognize more flaws in your game and are fixating on those instead of your progression. Uh, yeah. So as you train more the more you train the more you realize like man i'm i kind of suck i'm kind of not doing that really well i'm not looking like hoffa mendez over here i'm looking like a knockoff version of hoffa mendez or marcelo garcia or you know whoever um but again that goes back to your mindset and you got to realize that you're not that world champion you're not that that black belt you're not that higher belt and the cool thing about jiu-jitsu is that you can develop your own personal style. Um, I think a great example of this is that uh, John Satava. If you guys know who John Satava is, he was a student of Marcelo Garcia. Well, he still is a student of Mar Marcelo Garcia. And, you know, John Satava has a style probably closer to uh, Marcelo Garcia's than any other student. Um, but, you know, no matter how close John's game is to Marcelo's, you know, he just won't be Marcelo. He's just, he's not Marcelo. And that's fine. There's only one Marcelo. Uh, but, you know, for someone in that situation, it's it's almost better to, uh, you know, you have to develop your own style. And that's natural too. When you, you know, when you're coming up, you usually gonna have a similar style to your instructor. Uh, but eventually, you know, hopefully by upper belts, you should be experimenting with your style, developing your own style, uh, not to knock John Satava, but that was a good example of someone kind of having a similar style and having to branch off eventually. Um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I see people fixating on their mistakes all the time. Um, I see people being too hard on themselves especially when they're not doing well in training or, you know, maybe one of their buddies is doing better in training. Um, you, I, I feel like you shouldn't fixate on that stuff. You can use it to motivate yourself, you know, that uh, kind of annoying feeling, like, ah, oh, man, I want to beat this guy. You should use that to motivate yourself, uh, but you shouldn't fixate it onto the point where it becomes a negative, like, feedback loop. And... Um, yeah, just focus on your own progression, man. I, I say that all the time, like, as an instructor, when I'm watching someone, you know, I might compare them them within their belt and their age categories. Uh, but also, at, you know, as an instructor, we look at the person themselves to see how much they've progressed individually. Uh, and I think that's a big factor as well, at least for progressions, belt prog promotions and progressions. Boom. Uh, so a good, uh, yeah, I don't know how to how to put this, but you know, a good alternative to compare yourself to your friends all the time and get, comparing yourself every day based off how you're doing. Uh, I used to do that. Like I used to like, uh, I, I think I had, had like a little jujitsu journal where it's like I would write down everything that happened in rolling that day. And, uh, you know, what techniques I was trying to work on. And um, I think I was trying to work like a knee cut or something. Uh, 
And man, I was so frustrated because I, I, there were some days where the knee cut was working really well, other days where, where that knee cut wasn't working. And so I was fixating on so much on that move where, where it was like I was trying to control the training almost every time. And so it got to a point where training wasn't fun. Like I was, because I was trying to work this one technique or whatever other techniques, it was like, it jujitsu wasn't fun because I was so fixated on getting the move right that I, I kind of missed the whole picture. So instead of comparing your, like how you're doing every day against, you know, in training or other people, a great, uh, something you guys can do is just compare yourself based off the year. Every year, kind of see how you're getting better. Every six months, every quarter, um, you know that's how business businesses work, right? They don't compare themselves every day how they're doing. It's more so like every quarter, like how are we doing this quarter? Oh, well, we didn't do that well. Okay, let's try to prepare for the next quarter. Um, even as far as skill progression, it takes time to develop skills. It might take me anywhere from it. It probably takes me like six months to a year, maybe longer to actually uh, add a skill to my game. And so, you know, if, I, if I'm if i working on, like, my Baron Bolo to Crab Ride and I'm not getting it the first week and, and then I give up, well, <laughs> dang, I'm not going to get better. But if I compare myself t- from last year and 2019, so 2019, 2020, 2021, okay, well, my Crab Ride's gotten a lot better. And it's, t- it's taking me time to develop that. Uh, and I've, I've taken time to be consistent. Like co- I've consistently worked on it for the last few years. Um, I think that is important. I think a lot of students they think that skill is going to come quick. Like, hey, I've been working the barambolo. I, I drilled the barambolo, uh, the barambolo, the crab rod like three times. I'm like, why isn't it working, bro? You need to be working that a lot more. <laughs> you need to get a lot more repetitions. You need to get a lot more specific training. You need to get a lot more rolling you need to get a lot more tournament experience trying that move and so going back to the topic compare yourself year on year so how are you how are you doing this last year this year compared to last year and it kind of a great example of this is like the evolution of mobile phones and you see in first on the right uh left side we've got the old school 1980s Wall Street mobile phone cell phone right it's huge it probably weighed like five pounds I don't know if it, I don't know if you could charge that thing it probably had a cord to to you know it was like a, it had a wire or something and then um, you know we could compare this phone to the like the new you got the Samsung something over there Sony I don't know what it is but the up to date camera and if we were to compare both phones of course they're in different completely different universes right different man different worlds apart so instead of comparing you know yourself from here to here it's almost better to look at like the closer progression you know so like you went from the wall street phone to like the little the little little phone with the little (laughs) you know the antenna that would come out and then from there you got the nokia (laughs) you know would have had no color on here, but had a few games and then so on and so forth. So, um, again, you know, if you're going to compare yourself, compare, compare yourself to your, to yourself and just look at it, you know, maybe quarterly, maybe, uh, you know, every six months, every 12 months and, uh, give yourself, give yourself some wiggle room to improve guys. You guys trying to improve in like one week, <laughs> you guys, you guys over here trying to like, Add a skill in one week, man. It's gonna take a little, little bit longer to add that skill. Yeah, so if you're beating yourself up, you're like down on yourself because you didn't, you can't bear and bolo really well, bro. You need to be bear and boloing for like years and years and years and years. You can watch the Mendez brothers. Um, there's old footage of them at Brown Belt. They're kind of working like the bear and bolo and crab ride, and it wasn't sharp at all. <laughs> Even, even like, when they got their black belts, there was times where, like, the stuff wasn't as sharp. It's like it slowly gets sharper. Like, their techniques slowly got sharper and sharper and sharper and sharper. And what happens is once they've got the technique very sharp, then they go ahead and teach their students, the kids, the techniques. And then the kids, you know, boom, pick it up even faster.
Timothy Ortel says, mount it in the glove box of the Mercedes. Yeah, yeah, he had the had the cell phone mounted in the in the car. I I, I wish I had some videos of that for some some kids come uh, growing up now. Like kids now, like they don't understand. Uh, I forgot where I was, guys. It's gonna be a short short. Short live stream today, guys. Uh, I think I put the Zoom link up. If anybody wants to jump in on there. It's been pretty chill lately, so I'm not going to force you guys to jump on there. Where was I? I lost myself. Um, so, yeah, stop putting so much pressure on yourselves. That's why I, I, that's probably some of my most frequent advice to students hey stop putting pressure on yourselves just go at your own pace man don't worry about how someone else is doing don't worry about what they're doing focus on you man focus on you <laughs> again back to vegeta uh you know he put so much pressure on himself to become a super saiyan and to beat goku Instead, man, he should have been focusing on himself, focusing on his own strengths. Because I could tell you Goku was not focusing on Vegeta, was he? The whole series, he was like, man, all right, Vegeta, you try your best, man. But I'll beat you. Um, and also training smart. Vegeta was not training smart the whole series, or at least for Dragon Ball Z. He wasn't training smart at all. He wasn't even training with anybody else. He didn't have any sparring partners. How are you going to get good and you don't have no sparring partners, man? Timothy Ortel says, I try to use modern resources as well. John Thomas has been you. Yeah. Um, even with us, like, you know, we there's a lot of cross-pollinization between all of us. You know, I've trained with John in Sweden. I know John trained with Espen in Norway. So we're always constantly learning. And, you know, when I'm training, trying to develop the techniques better. And in, so that when I teach it, you know, it makes sense. And then um, that's basically it. We try to keep pushing the envelope, keep uh, developing our skill set. Uh, but yeah, you know, stop putting so much pressure on yourselves. Um, I mean, you know, some people do well under pressure. Usually the compet competitors do well under pressure. Um, but I, I think I don't have the resource. I don't know what the resources are for this, but... You know, a lot of skill progression needs to be done under no pressure. You know, you need to be able to perform uh, or you want to be able to perform um, optimally. And so, like, you know, some people, there are some outliers out there like Michael Jordan that, you know, you piss him off. He's like, okay, he can tap into something to where he can just perform above and beyond everyone else. Um but your average person, it needs like uh, less stress, a more relaxed environment to uh, perform well. And so in training, a lot of times, that's why instructors will play calming music, usually some calming music to kind of help you guys flow, some reggae, reggaeton, some Brazilian funk, something to help you get your flow, kind of relax your mind, help you loosen up your body. Um, some schools will play some hard metal, some rock music. But usually you can, if you watch, if you ever watch a class and someone puts on rock music, some heavy metal, uh, some grunge or something, man, they, people go hard. So you can almost control like the tempo of the rolling based off the music. Uh, but yeah, um, some other ways to uh, kind of relax. So calm music, play some calm music. Um, that's one great way to like chill out. Some other people use some substances to help them chill out. Um, Luke Walker says, hey, I'm a teenager and I'm growing pretty quickly. Will my game evolve or change a lot because of this? Uh, yeah, you're going to be more awkward, buddy. <laughs> you're going through that growth spurt, you're going to be a lot more awkward. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just... Uh, definitely don't be too hard on yourself. If you're awkward and like your just body's just growing too fast to keep up, your brain can't keep up with what your body's doing. Uh, 
yeah, just don't beat beat yourself up too hard. Um, yeah, it's rough, man. It's rough for those teenagers. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm still the same height from when I was, like, in high school, so <laughs> I didn't have that problem. Uh, but for, you know, someone like you growing, uh, yeah, just... Just enjoy that awkwardness, man. <laughs> your body, you're going to be wanting to do something. Your body's not going to react. So you're just going to have to chill out, you know. Probably just enjoy. Enjoy that growth spurt. Make sure you eat a lot. Uh, we're almost getting done, guys. Uh, again, that Zoom link is pinned in the chat. If anybody wants to jump in there and talk uh, live with me. I've been scaring everybody away, so. Timothy says, uh, yep. And Professor worked with John in St. Louis. Okay, yeah. That Midwest, man. That Midwest is small. Small, uh, small network out there. Uh, where are we? Here we go. It says, uh, BJJ is not a question of who's better or who's more t technical. It's a question of who's left. And I have seen this a ton of times where, you know, we get like a super gifted athlete come in and then maybe they do okay or maybe they get their butt kicked. And then, may, and then man, maybe a week or two later, they're gone. So, you know, if it's too easy for you, usually you're not going to stick with it. Um, that's basically it. You know, everyone at Black Belt was just the people that stuck around, you know, that went through those highs and lows. And, um... It's just, you know, jiu-jitsu's got to be in your heart, you know. If you want to if you want to stick with it this long, it's got to be in your heart. And, um, you know, whenever I, I meet someone and they're like, man, I don't, I'm not really into jiu-jitsu this much, I just say, hey, go find something that you, you love, you know. Go do that. Spend your time doing that thing. Don't waste time doing this. Um, unless you really care about it. Um I am. I don't know where I am, guys. Where's my note? Uh, yeah. And you know, oftentimes the people that are really good, really technical, don't make it to black belt. Usually, it's the person that wasn't super good that had to work hard at it, that had to put in the effort, had to put the sweat and blood and tears into this, this uh, martial art that stick with it. Uh, but in order to make it this far, you gotta let things go. When you're not doing well, let things go. When you're doing well, don't focus too much on it. Just focus on getting better. Timothy Ortel says, yes, yeah, some people grow eight inches in the summer. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I can use eight more inches on the height here. <laughs> Actually, I like being short. Because, man, I can get out of half guard. Easy. Uh, leg locks are harder to get on me. Uh, what else? Uh, crucifix, easy to get into. Half guard, I can just kind of disappear. Uh, so, so some things are pretty cool being short. I mean, obviously, if you're tall, too. Hey, work, work with what you got. Luke Walker says, thanks, man. Also, your vids help a lot. Thank you. He said, I've been, I've beaten some adults with the spider lasso. Yeah, I mean... If you're tall, man, be working that spider lasso, cross sleeve, collar sleeve guard, matrix, etc., etc. Uh, yeah, I think that's the end of the presentation, there, guys. Just use a marathon, not a sprint. Um, and it's a great saying, you know. Just use a marathon, you know. It's a long. It's ever never ending marathon. It's just you keep running, keep going, keep trying to get better. I was talking to someone pretty recently about the belts, and you know, so many people are usually students are in a rush to get the belts, but once you get your black belt, you're just chilling. There's nothing else to do. There's nothing else. There's no more belts really. Not for another twenty five years. Maybe you get some stripes, but you know that's years and years between. Uh, so yeah, enjoy those colored belts. You know. It's more fun. Black belt gets a little bit more serious. Uh, especially, you know, when you go to tournaments or you're traveling. It's a little bit more serious, but at the lower belts, it's a little bit more fun.
Timothy Ortel says went from five three to just under six foot freshman sophomore year. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Dig. Uh but yeah, that's basically basically it for my little presentation here. I didn't want to keep you guys up too late. Uh, if you guys had any questions, uh, you can let me know in the chat room. Also got the Zoom, the Zoom link up there as well. I'm thinking about maybe changing the Streamlabs or something too. We'll see. Bro, I got too many tabs open. Uh, where am I? Uh, there we go. Let me close this out. There we go. <laughs> Man, it's taking me so long to get all this technology working, but it's gotten a lot better. Uh, got a lot better. Luke Walker says, Jim shut down because of the new variant. Is there anything to practice in lockdown? Um, I mean, you could just work on your basics, like your uh, conditioning, cardio. You know, we could do walk sprints um i've been doing more like weighted carries so like w wear like a weight vest and just walk uh you know you're young so sprinting would be good um work on your f mobility your flexibility if your gym like workout gyms available maybe start hitting the weights a little bit um yeah i say when in doubt work on your conditioning conditioning is always something good to have. Um, you maybe try to get like a training pod together, like maybe two, one or two other guys where you can train in maybe your house or somewhere else. Uh, Zoom classes, something. Just keep your mind active. If you got to pick up another sport, swimming, rock climbing, something, just be active. James Arnold says, uh, how often should you be drilling to be a top-level competitor? Uh, depends on you. Uh, I know some people that hate drilling, but they do a lot of positional sparring. Um, uh, I mean, starting out, you probably should be drilling a lot more just to develop movement skills. That's something that I see a lot of high-level grapplers do. They do a lot of movement skills. Think AOJ. Um you know, they'll go through the moves over and over and over, which is fine, too. Um, I don't drill it that often. Um, but also, you know, as you become, uh, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not more mature, but higher level. Like, when I see higher level guys go, they don't have to drill the techniques as much. They do. They drill the technique like once or twice. Okay, got it. Boom. Muscle memory. Uh, that that comes with years of experience from training but uh say you're you're a newer person you're gonna need to drill that move you know ideally you know 50 to 100 times in that one session which is pretty tough right because everybody's talking everybody's over here looking at something else talking wasting time uh, you know when you guys are in your class the instructor shows the move man you should be trying to get as many reps as possible at least 20 reps 50 reps would be perfect. Uh, but usually guys talking and doing other stuff, not too focused. So it depends on your school. Um, one thing you can do, you know, you, your instructor shows a move. Okay, you drill the technique. And then, uh, you know, you guys roll and train, blah, blah, blah. At the end of class, maybe drill the technique again. You know, when people are kind of sitting around, kind of talking. Just, man, drill the technique again some more. Get as many reps as possible. Uh, so I guess there's no number. There's no exact number. Just get as many reps as you can. Luke Walker says, thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Thank you, buddy. Um, yeah, I got about 20 minutes, guys. I'll try to try to answer any questions. If you guys want to jump on the Zoom, got that. If you guys want to stay on the chat, we got that. i um, trying to see how the Zoom's doing or the chat's doing. Um I've been I've been enjoying the live stream on on uh, YouTube a little bit. I think I think I get a little bit more interaction on on Instagram. So maybe I'll try to maybe next year I'll try to do more Instagram lives too. Um, uh, 
But yeah, we talk you know a lot about just jujitsu being a marathon, not a sprint, and it's something we just gotta keep saying. You know, as instructors, higher belts keep saying it to help motivate the newer students in particular. You know, new students are the lifeblood of your school. So try, if you see if you see a white belt new person struggling, don't wait on your instructor to help tell you to go help somebody. Just man, go be preemptive, go help that person so you can have more training partners. Play some music real fast. Let me know if you guys can hear the music. Take a water break. <laughs> saw earlier but I had my my, uh, my set of claws out <laughs> it's backwards on here you guys can't see it guys i think that's gonna be it for today's live stream we covered a, a good little lesson uh for you guys um <laughs> yeah i hope to see um white santa can't dance yeah you can't i'm sorry uh yeah i'll I, i'm gonna aim for one more live stream in uh next week probably wednesday i don't know what day that is let's see real fast y'all aim for wednesday and then i'll i kind of want to maybe see i think that's like the 29th i want to see going forward like what days i want to do maybe i'll do a poll on youtube see what days i want to do the live stream on what times work um because i would like to get more people on here obviously um and we've been doing live stream since I think September, September, October. I don't know if anybody knows what they, when I've been doing the live streams. It's been I've been consistent for about two or three months, so I want to see uh, how I can make this better. James Arnold says I've been training primarily in the gi, but want to start dabbling in no gi. What is a good open guard for no gi if I've been doing spider and daily hiva? Uh, I mean. Realistically, you're probably gonna have to stick with some reverse daily heva, buddy. You can play a little bit of daily heva and no gi, you know, daily heva to matrix, daily heva to bolo, kind of no gi bolo, a little bit tough in no gi. Uh, but usually, reverse daily heva is gonna be the go to for open guard players. Um, otherwise, you know, you're gonna be forced to play half guard or butterfly, half butterfly, butterfly guard. Which can be a little bit tougher if you're not, you know, we don't really play those in the gi. Especially open guard players don't really play those in the gi. Uh, so I would probably say reverse the lahiva. <laughs> reverse the lahiva all the way. Uh, but yeah, guys, I'm going to see how, uh, you know, going forward what I want to do for 2022. How to make the live stream better. Um, I, I kind of like when I had a guest on here too. I, I kind of worked. I think that worked a little bit better for me. I mean, uh, I think it was a little bit just more fun for me. A little bit more. Uh, but we'll see. I'll probably put a poll in the YouTube uh, community tab so you guys vote. vote. And I think that's it, guys. I think uh, one more live stream next week, and then uh, I'll see what I want to do going forward. Uh, but hopefully this video helped you guys. And um, if you see somebody struggling, if you see a, have a friend struggling, new person struggling, higher belt struggling, you know, just reach out to them, try to help them out. And um, that's basically it, guys. Hope you guys had a great, great night. Enjoy yourselves wherever you are.
wherever time whatever time zone you're in enjoy yourselves and uh, have a great holiday i'll play some music get you guys out of here we'll get to santa dancing too Somebody said Santa can't dance. Santa, show me your moves. Next week.